when you go to any job interviews and you be asked that have you designed the framework from scratch that's the one of the basic questions that you'll be asked from everybody um and your common answers could be yes or no depending on, on your skill set um so let me tell you what that means so if you see into this screen um you would see that automation test it has the some uh, the branch this is basically the gate will go from that um, so basically this is just my uh, local uh, framework that is already in place it is something what we can call it was designed from scratch so if you see here is a design from the maven I have put a very basic things here um, so depending on your project it could go you know as biggest as it could right depending upon the size of the tests you would have so here if you see there is a main in Java, a uh, main has some um, cucumber, this is a cucumber framework so it will have some cucumber related files. So all selenium code, Java, don't get confused with that. Um, so only the things different with the cucumber is that your test will run through the cucumber. Um, there are um, some common configs that I have. Um, which means just how to launch the browser and how to set the page for the page options. Um, there's nothing in the main resources right now. Um, so the test Java, basically this contains all of the packages that's based upon the page and then steps associated to those. So uh, this is the hooks, which is what I have already explained in my other videos. So Cucumber hooks is basically um, just how you want to get started with your test and then how you want to handle when it ends. So this is rest of these are like a page objects model. So if you see each one of this package contains two classes, one is a page, which is uh, just nothing but the find by annotations and it identifies that web element. So rather than driver dot find element by ID or class name, and you, then you put this face here, we are going through page object, uh, page factory pattern. So where you would be able to just use the find by annotation to do that all job for you. Um, and by the way, this is also already explained in my other videos and my selenium videos. Um, so there's some um, uh, implementation what I'm doing with those. So those are the elements that I pulled from here. So and what I want to do, I want to look up and then I want to click. Basically, I'm just going through some methods, right? Um, so each one of these classes or packages would have the classes like this. Um, beside that, let me go to one of the quick things. So here's a Cucumber feature. This contains the test that is actually written for the Cucumber feature. So if you see here, this has, uh, you know, some annotation based. That's how the Cucumber will run the test. Um, and this is just much readable format. So any business people would be able to write this or any uh, tester so it's it's nothing but just the language so human defined language it has no coding thing here only the thing is whatever you write here should be associated to some methods so if you click here uh you'll be able to go there so you can just right click and find step it will take you back to what steps that is written Anyway, that's basic about the, how the framework should be, right? So you see there are page files, page uh, implementation, there are methods, um, there are setup uh, stuff where you would like to launch the browser, how you want to launch the browser, what kind of um, test you want to run, what annotations you use, or what of the methods you want to use, how, uh, what would be your framework design. So you want to go with the Cucumber, or you want to just use the JUnit, test NG, it's totally for you up to you so however you want to implement your entire testing framework um, there should be some kind of you know um, some design right so that this entire thing making this up is basically what they're talking about do you know the framework to design from the scratch and it is very nothing this is just easy just follow the videos that I already have implemented and there are so many videos we talk about Going through the scratch anyway um so in this video i'm just going to show you how you'd be able to set up your framework um basically not setting up the framework basically the already framework which is uh, which is created by your co-worker or somebody 
Okay. Um, you simply want to uh, import those uh, code and then you start using from the day one. So you don't want to go through writing this again and again, right? Every time new person comes into your uh, company and you don't want to have him just write this off. You want to continue working from wherever you left off, right? So for that purpose, this entire code repository concept came into picture. Um, so I already uh, went through the basics of the code repository. So if you don't, please do follow the other videos. Um, so let me just go with a quick um, snapshot what I'm talking about. So if you go through, if you know the GitHub, this is my Git uh, just uh, demo purpose. I put this on. So this is how your uh, Git would look like. So if you see here, so this is how the Git uh, dashboard would look like. And if you see everything that is uh, that has been here in this framework, you would see these codes here. So if you see here, source, obviously, right? And then you go test, inside test, there's a Cucumber features. If you see here, Cucumber feature has two files. Here you have a two files. You can open this up, you're fine. You can also open exactly the same thing, right? As you would be opening from your Eclipse. Um, so this is the web version. So tomorrow when you push any code, when you commit any code uh, into the server, into the repository, your coworker might have this view uh, if they haven't pulled. If they pull, they can look exactly like this into their local um, IDE, whatever they use, IntelliJ, uh, SDS, or they could use Eclipse. Um, so until they pull, or even after they pull, this will basically the view that you can actually see. So your anybody um, commits, makes a commits, that means they uh, pushed their code into the server, they'll be able to uh, have basically they are sharing this view of whatever they did and that's the view exactly it is persisting into the repository server so um, let's go with this so first day what you would see is when you get this link you would go through this dashboard view and here if you see there's a clone or download okay this is basically where you would be able to download the entire code into your local place so in order to do that, I have you uh, create a couple folders. One I would name as a demo workspace. This is just empty. And then at the same location, I create another folder, which is a demo base. Okay, this is just a base where I want to put all my code. So I'm going to just copy this uh, path here. Um, and actually I can just click right click here and git bash here, okay. If you have downloaded Git uh, with my other videos, and when you do right click from any empty folder, any folder into um, uh, into your My Computer Explorer, right? So you could simply go here, whatever folder you want to keep your code, then right click and then Git Bash here. That's all you want to do, okay? Then once you see this screen, then you'd be able to go through some commands that I will tell you. Um, so first of all, what do you want to do? You would get this link from your workplace, right? So your company will give you this place before you want to set up. And as soon as you get this link, you simply open this up. This is my link uh, and it may vary. Every uh, people have their different, um, every company has a different repository link. Simply get this green link. Uh, it's a GitHub, any company may have different. So click the GitHub here, and you get this link, okay? As soon as you click there, you get this link. Copy this, okay? Copy the entire link. Just copy entirely this one. Okay, one more time. So I copied that one. And now all I do is I have, and if you see, I have nothing here, okay? Nothing in my workspace. Um, and then before that, I'm going to, so now let me get out of this screen so you know that this is a brand new workspace, okay? Going to bring up entire new workspace in the into my IDE. 
Um, so until that comes up, let me go with this one. So the code here, I already copied the path. So all I do is git clone and then space, okay? Then paste whatever URL you get from that GitHub, just paste it. Git space clone, C-L-O-N-E space. And this is the URL, whatever you get from that, um, um, that link, okay? And all you do is just hit enter. Before doing that, See here, this is an empty, totally empty, uh, empty um, IDE, right? There's nothing here. And we're gonna see the changes here now. Uh, so now, all I do is just hit enter now. It will say cloning into the, um, the repository, whatever it wants to be. And it says everything's 100% done. There's no issues. If you had issues, you would see them. So now, after this point, we want to show you where that code goes to. So if you see earlier, demo base had no codes. Now you see robust selenium. This is the code that you already get. Basically, you downloaded the code from the GitHub, okay? So now, after that, what do you do? You already downloaded. So depending upon size of the project, it could be, uh, it could take a little longer, right? So that's fine, totally fine. So after that, you can basically just minimize this for now. And let's go and point this place, import this folder, and then bring this up into your local workspace. So file, import, because that's a Maven project. So you would go Maven, existing Maven projects, hit next. Okay, now you have to point to whatever this folder is. Okay, you have to point this folder and then it will detect that farm.xml. So browse for that. So this is my location. So all I do is just select this. As soon as I select it, it will show the farm.xml. Okay, just get that piece. As, unless you see this, that means you are not into the right place. So you need to make sure this has to come from the whatever name the repository has. Rest is your folder location. Anyway, after that, just hit, make sure this is checked. Hit finish. And it, if you see here, green bar, green bar is basically loading that entire code, importing into the local workspace. So if you see here, first time it also read, which is fine. It is still loading. Okay, literally what this is doing is, it is downloading all of the jars that is into this pumped XML. It has to download them, right? So all of this jar has to be downloaded. These dependencies has to be downloaded. We are getting this through Maven. We are not going through the traditional approach like right click here, go to build path and get download, import jar. We're not doing that practice at all. So by now I'm sure this is done, but let's see why is this coming error. So let's go here. Okay, so let's see why this is coming error. Okay, it says uh, change the compliance to JRE 1.7 and this is very common, okay? So if you see here, JRE library is coming 1.5, we want to change that. So there are a couple of ways you can do that. You can just go to properties and then you go to compiler. Instead of this, just go here and check that and select. I have a 10, so I'll just take most latest. So apply, it will ask me if that's what I want. I do yes. Now if you see it is doing the rebuild again, so let that be there and all error is gone. So you might see these type of issues pretty often. Okay, so don't be surprised. So if you do, I mean, that's what you need to do. Just come through the compiler and change that preference. Okay, so here there's no issues. Now, if you want to just run the any cucumber test, which we had inside that repository from the day one of your work, you can just get exactly same code and you can just run.
So if you see here, this is the file. So let's say if you see this annotations, this means it's just commented. It is not going to run that. If I want, I can just uncomment it. For now, I'll just leave it whatever it is. So I'll just run this test. So to run, in order to run the cucumber test, I'll just go run as right click from the project. Run as, okay. And I can just run on the, whatever it says, run configuration. I need to set that up. Uh, because I want to run that as a J unit, so I'll just go and double click the J unit. Okay, I can just call this out with the J unit 4 because that's what I have. I have to make sure those versions are correct. I can just run this with the search. I need to search this. The runner class, I have to find out that's where the cucumber runner is. So my process is I double click this, I need to set up the configuration to run and then as soon as I get into this window, first thing I will do is I'll select what version of J unit I have and then I'll do this checkbox and I'll tell them which is my run config uh, source. So if you see that's inside this, um, so that's all I'm pulling it in. So all I do now is just run. And if you see here, it's going to run that very quick. This red thing is all the logger, right? Log. So if you see this is all the automated test and I did not touch anything, everything's just running. I'm just going to stop this right here. I don't want to run entire suite. If you want to uh, use this, please go ahead, go ahead and download this code and you can start using from the day one and get your hands on. Um, so next thing, if you want to see the result, result would be in the J unit because this is a new project set up. So nothing is visible. So I'm just going to show you where to pull the J unit from. So windows show view other and then Java, then you need to pull J unit. So now you will see what test it ran. Oh, actually it is here. Okay. This is this side. So if you see this. Uh, scenario passed right so if we see everything is green other one is not so because that we just interrupted that test anyway so this is how you'll be able to get started with your new project setup um pretty much a couple things you need to understand is you don't need to write entire stuff from zero everything will be there you simply need to get the link for the git and then get downloaded download the code after you download the code, you need to make sure that code is imported into your IDE. In order to do that, you have to go to file menu and then import like we just did. If you missed any of this portion and if I am uh, pretty fast enough and you want it to be slow down, uh, please um, go back to the videos and um, um, pause um, if, you, if it is hard to um, if there's anything that you were not able to understand, please feel free to comment. I'll be able to you know, help you out understanding any of the stuff that you don't. Um, thank you very much for um, watching this video and please do follow my uh, channel, subscribe my channel. If you have not, please support my channel and we look forward for more other interesting stuff into the Git and we'll learn more about the Git commands that you uh, will uh, that it will be very helpful for you okay thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video then.